In today's training, we're going to be talking about one of the most dreaded time and task of operations management, namely the year-end physical inventory count. Uh, before we start, let me clarify a couple of things. One is that we're going to be using the MISA sample company that is provided uh, to you with your install, as you can see here. And the second is that we're going to be focusing on a company that is not using serial or lot tracking in their operations. If your company happens to use serial and lot tracking, then you can contract Central Nervous Systems and we have solutions uh, to offer you for your year-end inventory count as well. So having said that, let's log into MySys as an admin so we will not have any permission issues. Hopefully your username and user group does not create any permission issues for you either. Um, the first thing you would do on a regular uh, year-end inventory count is go to stock control, select physical inventory, print worksheet. And here we have a selection criteria that is offered. Uh, you can have your list based on items, cycle, or date. Uh, because this is a year-end inventory count, we're going to use item-based and range instead of a list. List is more commonly used for cycle counts throughout the year, uh, where you might want to select a few items from the whole list rather than the whole inventory. Uh, because this is the year end, again, we're going to pick range and pick from the first item in the list all the way to the last item. Select all the locations, sort by item number, and if you were to give this as a count sheet to the people who are going to do the count, you would hit print and we'll do a preview and look at what that printed sheets or sheets would look like. As you can see here, all the items are listed uh, with all their locations that are identified in their item master as a possible location for that item. So in here we can see that A100 as the item number has location 01 as the only possible location for itself because it switches to A89. However, when we look at I01, we can see that it has location 1, 2, 3, and 4 as all possible locations. So the count sheet lists all item and location combinations for us to be able to enter a count uh, for those. Now let's close out of that. Now we will use the record button, which will accomplish two things. One, it will take a snapshot of our inventory in time right now what our MISIS inventory quantities are. And second, using this information, it'll create a worksheet for us. There we get the message, worksheet created successfully. Uh, we move on to our next step, which is the edit batch. We'll create a new batch and we'll feed our worksheet into this batch. Count type, we will use stock plus whip. Uh, if you have work in process inventory, this will be useful for you. If not, uh, you could just use uh, stock only. Uh, qu count quantity recorded. Uh, this is asking me what numbers should MISIS populate the count quantity field in the sheet that it's going to create. Because my count quantities are not in yet, I would like to populate them with zero. I hit enter and the worksheet has been fed into the batch and here it's displayed. Uh, all my items, their locations, and counted stock, as you can see, is zero because that's the option we selected. If I tick this box, show recorded quantities, a column pops here, recorded stock. These are the quantities currently available in MISIS for that stock in that location uh, per row. When we have our physical inventory, what we are trying to end up with is a number for this counter stock column for every item location combination so that MISIS can see if there is a difference between the counted stock and the recorded stock and taking physical stock basically the counted stock as the default and calculating the difference and creating a return inventory or dispense inventory type of transaction to true up to adjust the inventory uh, based on your physical count one way is to go ahead and enter all of these counted stock rows manually. And as you can imagine, as your items and possible locations increase, this becomes an increasingly difficult task to do manually. 
So here what we want to do is we want to show you a method using Excel, import and export functions, and how to do this a little bit more easier. What we want to do here is save this, and for now we will get out of here, and we will need to download some data from MISIS to be able to use in our Excel file. So we'll go to Master Files, Items, Export, Items. You'll see included tables listed here. Whenever we export something from MISIS, it'll show us a list of included tables. And all of these tables, if selected, will be exported as a separate tab on our Excel sheet. I want to go ahead and deselect all. And I want two tabs in here. One is my item. So I always have to make sure that I check the parent here uh, so that the selected child will actually uh, be exported. Now, when I select item and item number, what this will export in the first tab of the sheet is all the unique item numbers that are available in the system. If I'm not mistaken, in our sample database, with the additions that I have done into the item masters, there is 104. The second sheet that, or sorry, the second tab I want to export is the item location details. So I make sure to check the parent again. I want item number, I want location, and here the difference between the first tab and this one, this will export all the item and location combinations. It's not going to export only the unique item numbers, but in the case of item I01 that we looked at, it will export it as four rows, I01 in location one, I01 in location two, three, and four. And finally, I will also want to see the stock. And if WIP was being counted in your organization, you can also check this, and that would export your WIP quantities as well. And I will go ahead and select a location where I want this data to be exported. Let's do it on our desktop. And let's call this uh, year end inventory. And let's save that. Uh, let's export. As you can see, 104 unique items and 299 rows in the second tab because of the different possible combinations with the item number and the location. So we say OK, and we can actually go into Excel and open and see what that looks like. I'm using a dual monitor setup, so in some cases, the windows will pop in my second monitor, and I will open from that location if that's not visible to you. Well, here is our Excel file that has been exported from MISIS. As you can see, the two tabs are here. The first tab is the unique item numbers. I actually will go ahead and rename this as item number. And then I will rename this as list, which will become apparent to you in a second when I explain what this tab will be used for. And the second one, I will rename the tab as MISIS data. And I will rename the column headers as item number, locations, and MISIS quantity. Okay, so what are these going to be used for? Well, first of all, in the list field, I want to create another column. I will call that locations. And I want to enter here the unique locations that are available to me. One easy way of finding that out is I can go and filter the data that is here and then look at the options. As you can see, there are four unique locations, uh, one, two, three, and four. I can cancel, get rid of the filter, find a place where these are listed one under the other, copy that, and paste it directly into here. So what is this list tab for? Well, when we are entering our accounts into the system, we want to make sure that there are no errors due to typos. So if my staff is entering their item numbers or their locations, I don't want to allow for a mistyped item number to be entered into the system. 
because then it's not going to match in MySys with an item number that is available in MySys. So instead of having an open field for them to enter their data, I want to create data validations where it's going to restrict their entries to the list that I give. So for that, let's create a physical count sheet. And I will move it to the end. It's just resisting the move. And here I will have Oh, sorry, before uh, putting the column headers. Uh, the first column is where they're going to be entering their item number. So I want to select the column, uh, go to data, data validation. Instead of any value, I want them to be restricted to a list. And that list will be from my aptly named list tab, all the items that are available here. Hit enter and enter again. And for the second column, I want to use the same logic of data validation and use a list again. And as the source, still go to the same list tab, but this time instead of the item number column, I'm going to use my locations. Now, my staff will be restricted to whatever's in the tab that has been exported directly from MySys, so there is no potential errors there. I also want to create uh, column headers, but because there is data validation fields here, I need to clear the first row. If there is a data validation within uh, part or all of the selected uh, cells, and you click data validation, it'll ask you whether it should erase whatever is already there. If I click OK, I will set it to any value and be able to enter here column headers uh, that are not part of the data validation. So we have item number, location. We want to enter physical quantity. Maybe you are keeping tag numbers on your counts to assign unique uh, numbers to each of your counts. And these would be it. So here, your staff, even if they were not selecting from a scroll down list, which is really unlikely that they would, especially in companies that are more than 100 items, which are most of the companies that I work for, it's more likely that they will either manually enter the item number or they will be copying and pasting that value from somewhere. So the data validation still works because it'll still check that manually enter or pasted value against the list and permit that. So let's, instead of selecting, let's enter an item number that doesn't exist in the system. You'll get an error saying that, no, this is not part of the list, so you cannot enter that. And the same thing goes for location as well. However, there are other errors our staff uh, can do. And one of these errors is to enter a count for an item in a location that it shouldn't have. What do I mean by that is you can select a correct item, a 100, and you can select a location that is within your list. So these are both validated and allowed to be entered. However, when we look at our data, we know that a 100 is only uh, is available in location 01. So this should have given us an error. To create that, uh, or to check for that, I should say, we will create a new key here, location validation keys. And this will simply be a combination field of the item number and the location uh, with a dash in between. This will be our key. And in the count, we are going to check against these keys uh, to make sure that this actually is a good combination that is being entered into the system as the item and location combination. So let's call this location validation. And this would be uh, rather a long formula. So I will just go ahead and copy that formula rather than uh, rewriting it from uh, scratch. And this is again in my second screen that you are not really seeing. 
and I will not go over the formula explaining it but if you want to look into it more you can pause the video here and uh, take a read at it what it's uh, essentially doing is that it is checking this entry here and trying to see if that combination exists within these keys since this was an invalid location for this item it's displaying invalid when we change it to location one it goes back to valid uh, there are other possible errors uh, that our staff uh, can make and one of those errors is entering the same uh, location uh, twice it can be an error or it might be that we actually keep the same item in the same warehouse in multiple uh, storage uh, areas in uh, racks or uh, pallet spaces so we still want to be able to identify those entries and then figure out how we want to handle them so we are going to create another field here called duplicate entry check and what this simply will do is look into the column and see if there are any values that are exactly the same as each other so again we will enter a formula here and we will make sure that this uses conditional formatting so it is a lot easier for us to see it uh, when the uh, values are being duplicated so this is essentially doing the same thing that our key did in mysis data tab it's creating a combination field of these and then it's going to look within itself to see this combination field is duplicated so if we were to enter again the same item in location one and if we had to copy this here these would show the same thing and if we had conditional formatting saying hey highlight if they're in duplicate values it would show this as duplicate like i said this might be due to the same person or different people going and counting the same thing twice so that would be a duplicate entry and an error that needs to be resolved or this might be due to the same item being in different locations within the same warehouse so one of the things that help with that is the tag numbers or simply just actually putting uh, colorful stickers on the items that are counted so the next person that comes around or the same person when they're going around they don't actually end up recounting uh, the same item in the same location okay so let's uh, delete this and as your item list gets longer and longer uh, it'll be harder to see whether there is any invalid entries in location validation or any duplicates here so what we can create is a mini dashboard here if you will that will alert us if there is any of these that exist so we can say invalid entry count and then duplicate entries exist and we can check whether duplicate entries exist or not based on the duplicate entry check column or the tag column so we'll have two of these so for invalid entry count we want to see if there are any invalid entries in the column e so we can enter the formula here asking it to count anything that is invalid so currently it says zero because there is nothing invalid in here and for this we want to say let's copy the formula here are there any duplicates in this column or if it was for the tag id column then it would have to look at the column where the tag ids are being recorded manually and make sure that there are no duplicate tag ids there so for us to have a good example let's go ahead and assume the perfect company where we did our count and everything was almost perfect so let's take our mysis data those are the counts uh, that are in mysis 
and let's actually copy down our formulas here. Sorry, this is breaking. All right. So as you can see, it's saying there are no invalid entries and there are no duplicate entries. Let's just play around with this. But first, let's create some conditional formatting to make it easier for us to see. So we can go here, conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. If this is equal to invalid, then highlight it in red. We can go here and do another conditional formatting, say, if there are any duplicate values, do it red. Here we can go and say, if this is greater than zero, highlight red. We can do for these similar highlight cell rules if they are equal to true highlight with red. So let's play around and see how that works. Let's say that I enter item number A100 with an invalid location. So immediately my location validation turns red and my count becomes one and turns red. And let's say that in item IO1, I enter the same location twice. Immediately my duplicate entry check turns red as well, my duplicate entries exist based on column F turns red. If I were to enter a tag number multiple times, again, this would turn, and if we did, again, uh, conditional formatting here, it would turn red as well. So as you can see, these are ways that we would be alerted to the wrong entries in the system. And if we change this to a unique value, this would change. Let's change this to location one, this would change. And change this to location two. Everything is as is. Um, let's say that for item IO1, it was 966 and this was 1100. So these are two discrepancies in our physical count different than the MISIS data. Well, we want a place where we are actually calculating these. So let's create another sheet and call this comparison. And in the comparisons sheet, uh, tab rather, I want to copy the first three columns from MISIS data. So I want to copy my item number. And I want to copy it all the way down. I don't remember how many rows or columns were there. There will be zeros where it's nothing. So I can delete those. So this is reading directly from my MISIS data tab and populating with that. I want to enter my physical quantity here. And I want to make sure that it's going to go and add up all the physical quantities that are entered as A100 and location 1. If there is multiple, like I said, there are valid reasons where there might be duplicates here. Even though this turns red, it doesn't always mean it's because of an error. It means that we just need to go and look into it and see if that was due to an error or not. So one of the reasons, again, is if the item exists in multiple pallet locations in the same warehouse, that would say, OK, there is a duplicate entry, but that's not an error. So that's why our physical quantity here should be adding all those uh, possible combinations and then we need a comparison like a delta um, that is going to say take the physical quantity as a default and subtract mice's quantity from it to see what the delta quantity is and as you can imagine the two numbers that we have changed a minus 34 and a plus 100 are immediately shown here as the values that are different uh, 
from our MISIS. And when we import this data back into MISIS, MISIS is going to calculate this automatically itself and we'll make those adjustments when we ask it to. So now that we've done that, uh, let's go to MISIS again and let's go to our stuck control, our batch one, and let's export this data. As you can see, there are three tables here. Uh, the last table will be blank because this is about uh, serial lot tracking detail and because we're not using that right now, it's going to be blank. Uh, the first one is just a summary and the second one is what we're really concerned about. So let's export this into the same location. It's MIPIBH is our file being exported as. Let's go ahead and open that Excel file. Again, I will be opening that in my second monitor, so you're not seeing that. What this brings up here is the three tabs that we have exported. The first one, like I said, is a summary. It's um, telling us how many entries there is, 299 entries, uh, the dates, all that. Uh, the third uh, tab is blank, and the second tab is what we're concerned about. Quantity is what is important. It is zero because we had asked it to be zero. Uh, these are going to be the quant quantities, and then recorded quantities are here. So we want to make sure that we draw from our sheet all the physical quantities for this item ID and location uh, that correspond to that quantity. And for that, we will use a formula to make sure it uh, draws everything uh, correctly. So once we enter our formula here in the first cell, asking it to check against our physical counts in our uh, created Excel uh, tab, we can copy this formula down all the way. And just to be safe, I usually don't like uh, exporting and importing uh, sheets with formulas, so I will copy this and paste it as values. So the values are there, but the formulas are gone. So I will save this and we will go back to MISIS and go to File, Import, select the sheet that we had just made changes to. We can pick Insert and Update and we can proceed and we don't really have to worry about mapping it because we have not created a brand new Excel sheet. We have rather exported a sheet, made some changes on it and are now importing it so the data fields are exact match. The, once the import is complete, we can go ahead and refresh it and here we will see the changes we have made. MISIS quantity was 2000, we changed it to 1966 MISIS quantity was 1,000, we changed it to 1,100. So it's a negative 34 here and plus 100 here, which is exactly what we had seen in our delta quantities uh, when we had calculated that. So obviously, when you have a lot more inventory and in a real, real physical count, uh, there will be a lot more changes. So we can close out of here. Now we don't need the Excel anymore. We can just save it. This will give an error message because this is an older form of Excel in XLS format. If you want to avoid this, you can save it as XLSX and it'll be the newer former uh, format of Excel and you will not uh, risk losing any formats. Uh, we can close this as well. And we have our batch here. We can go to check batch like that. Initialize, check, and there should be no errors because there are no duplicates. We need to resolve all the duplicates and everything on the Excel side of things before we import our data. Check is completed. There is nothing here. Now, if we go and host batch here, it is going to make those negative 34 and plus 100. So let's do that. Do you want to create backup first? It's always a good idea uh, to create backup first. So let's say yes. Uh, depending on how many uh, rows of data there is, uh, this can take a few minutes or a few seconds. 
post completed. So you are completely finished with your year-end physical inventory count and the adjustments required for it. If we go now to master files and pick one of those items, uh, hopefully I can remember which item I messed with. Um, I think it was IO1. And if we go to history, you will see that uh, today is December 3rd. There is two entries on December 3rd. Both of them are due to count stock. One is decrement stock in 34, one is increment stock in 100. It has made those changes uh, that we had calculated as our delta. And this will conclude your physical year end inventory and making the necessary inventory adjustments as per your physical count. Hope this tool will prove to be useful to you in your most stressful time of the year.